Welcome everyone to the first ever EWTN National Pro-Life Roundtable. What's very interesting is that the preamble of our Constitution talks about how Canada laws are founded on a belief in God and in the rule of law. And that preamble has been set aside uh, more and more so that we see rights now thought of as conferred by the state or conferred by the charter. So why is it that what we instinctively and intellectually know about the baby in the womb never translates over into impacting what we culturally believe about abortion? And it's because we have this cognitive dissonance and there's this wall up. Section 7 of our charter is the right to life. The court decided to redefine it and say the right to life also constitutes a right to die. We've gone from a country that has invested money into helping those who are depressed to all of a sudden turning everything on its head where we find ourselves in a state of suicide relativism. What if eventually we look at someone in my condition who uses a walker or a wheelchair, oh, I can't see myself looking like that. What trouble must she have to go through? I'd rather end, end my life before I end up in her shoes. The Liberal leader Justin Trudeau made the proclamation that anyone who holds the pro-life position cannot even run for the Liberal Party of Canada. So not only do we have to contend with a leader who um, is in favour of this violation of fundamental human rights, but now he is discriminating against you know, half the country who disagree with abortion from even taking part in our democratic process. But Parliament isn't where the work on this needs to be done. The work needs to be done in our homes, in our schools, in our communities. And in Parliament, just for example, there's, there's three major parties that could win the election this October. Two of them are led by Catholics, and they are the most staunchly pro-abortion politicians you will meet. But you'll find Catholics like that across the country, so we have to start in our own house. Unless we have a conversion of heart and decide that as Catholic Christians, we have a place in the public sphere, we should not be shutting ourselves up because some politicians tell us that religion has no place in the public square. I think we would say the opposite. No, you have a right to be there. These young people are really going to, to take this on and it's through the legacy of, of the work that our older pro-life heroes have done over the years that have laid the foundation for young people now to really make a social change. We're joyful and trusting in the Lord that he's got this. This is his battle and we're just here to do exactly what it is that he needs us to do in every single moment and that's what we're gonna keep doing. because we believe that life is a gift and we want to let life win. People used to tell me, are you sure you can do this? Are you sure that you can handle a baby and going to school full time? And I looked at them in the eyes and I said, well, I don't have a choice. I have to. And if he grows up to be a man of God, if he grows up to know that it is okay to dream in a world that is scary, then I know that I would have done my job as his mom. in the book of Genesis that men and women were created in the image and likeness of God and you know this is a truly profound revelation because we were created in the image and likeness of God we have inherent dignity and value and are worthy of being treated with respect at all stages of life from the time that we are conceived in our mother's wombs until we take our last breath when we ourselves are in a position of doing what is good and avoiding what is evil, of making a choice for life, God gives us the grace to do so. Uh, it's great to be here once again with you and with EWTN, bringing the National March for Life Canada right here in Ottawa. Right behind us is Parliament Hill. This is the place where laws are made or should I say, where laws are struck down. So this is the 18th March, and uh, they've been wonderful, wonderful events as more and more young people uh, come to the understanding of what abortion is all about.
I have begged for and received forgiveness from God for deliberately taking the innocent life of my unborn child. Increasingly, I'm aware that life will win because life comes from God, the author and finisher. I willingly embrace every opportunity to be silent no more. This is the largest group we've ever had at the March for Life. Let's go! Brother Sixa, years ago, we had a choice. We had a choice whether to have this child or not. But I'm really glad that we have chosen, me and my wife have chosen to have life. And here she is right now. What a life, what a gift. Everyone has their inspiration for being here today. One you can see is in my arms. Her name's Isabel. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the subject of my other book, famously said, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. By the grace of God, speak the truth of this madness, of this horror, of this murder. Speak that truth in love. Thou shalt not kill. That's simple, it is profound. It is something we need to reflect upon and we need to live and we need to affirm. I greet you all. I bring you greetings from my home province of Newfoundland and Labrador. In our own constitution of the Anglican Network of Canada, we have written in respect for human life as one of our main clauses. But Canadians are rising up and I'm very uh, excited today. Je suis ici avec George Bouchami, Campaign Quebec V, who has collected a, a, a petition with over 2,000 names of it from Quebecers who are opposed to euthanasia. I am very happy to receive that from him. I want you to let all the MPs know, not just the ones that are here today, that this is not a good idea and that you don't support it. Let them know. Send a strongly worded email or letter to your member of parliament about the Supreme Court decision. There was a lady a little while ago that was proclaiming my body, my right, and she's right. But we're just here to, you, to consider that other body, that other child that doesn't have an ability to speak. We're here to ask you to consider that. Always remember that history is on the side of justice and democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, history is on your side. I stand before you today as a Canadian woman who doesn't need to take my shirt off to get my point across. We stand here today as young pro-life Canadians, not only as a witness, but as a threat to all those MPs sitting inside this very building behind us who refuse to give human rights to all human beings. When we wonder how many children we should have, how do we decide? Let life win. When we, these politicians decide what to vote on, what do they decide? Let life win. And when we go to vote for them, we decide, let life win. God bless you. Join me in saying our slogan for today, let life win. Wind.